parking administration, but which is actually labeled other general government parking enforcement unit. And Christy has a wonderful presentation entitled Parking Enforcement Unit. And I'm sure the chief would like to hear from Christy in her presentation, right? It's a great presentation. <laughs> Christy, do you think? <laughs> Enforcement. Uh, with the adjustments that you'll be seeing when we go when the chief goes through the budget, the actual budget is up 46.39% over the 18 default. The total budget is up $43,482. Wages are up 60.67% or $39,667. Utilities are up 8.78% or $215. The lease um, for the Church Street lot is up 4.76% or $1,000. And items not categorized, which happen to only be supplies and expenses in this case, is up three thousand or is up 53.06% or $2,600. And I show you the breakdown of the pie chart there. I threw in a slide of in, maybe interest to some. It basically just breaks down going back to 2013, the revenue um, compared to the expenses. And then I break down further for you. I'm not going to read this entire thing to you because the chief's going to go through a lot of this, but it's showing you the breakdown in the part-time wages has, is increased by $13,000 or $835. 7000 of this is related to uh, the parking lot supervisor position is in this proposed budget becomes a parking lot enforcement director, and that has a $7,000 increase there. And then the part-time parking enforcement officers that were in the police department budget have been moved out of the police department budget and into this parking enforcement um, budget in that uh, is up $6,835. The seasonal wages is uh, where we categorize all of the individuals who run the daily operations of the lots for Ashworth Island Half and the Church Street. That is increased by $25,832. Um, a lot of that is related to the hours of operation it being increased to maximize revenues there. Utilities are increased based on their average spending. If you look at the averages, um, you'll see that those lines are either being overspent or underspent, so we adjusted them accordingly to better reflect what is average spending <coughs> in those categories. The Church Street parking lot is a lease that we have with the diocese, and that's up $1,000. It's increased $1,000 each year. Um, so for a five-year lease. I shouldn't say, don't make it sound like it's forever. It was for a five-year lease, and in each of the five years it increased by $1,000. And supplies and expenses is increased by $2,600, largely related to operational changes, which the chief will go over with you, but um, a lot of that in the supplies and expenses is related to signage for the lots and the <coughs> tickets that we, that we are issuing to the, uh, patrons of the lot as a, in, they used to basically just give off the roll <coughs> that you buy a dollar store. So we were trying in an effort to make it harder to duplicate the process. The um, Lieutenant Gidley at the police department came up with a new ticket. And so a lot of the uh, expenses and supplies and expenses are related to um, things that they're trying to make better down in the lot. And I think that's the last slide. Okay. And the chief has more, Christy. I think, in regards to operations that he's going to share. Um, and I'm sure he will. But Christy, I wanted to ask you, uh, the administration of the town-owned parking lots was done by the former Parks and Recreations Director, right? Correct. And uh, that, was, that was included in her pay as part of the parking... Parks and Recreation Department supervisor, right? Or department head. She didn't, I mean, she didn't get any extra money for extra administering money the parking lots. No. Right. So. Nor is the chief, I don't think. We had a personnel change as a consequence of the turnover at the uh, department head of the Parks and, and, and Recreation Department, right? And I don't know whether the new person in that position is getting the same pay. I don't recall. Are they getting the same pay as the former uh, head was getting? I have to go look it up and see. I don't yeah. know off the top can, of my head. Can you get back to us employees. on that? Yep. Um, in any case, uh, 
we're basically getting a free ride with Diana on, in terms of administrating the parking lot. And now uh, Selectman and town management has decided to administer these parking lots in a different fashion, apparently as a consequence of the personnel changeover. Uh, and so I just wanted to highlight that background for you all. Now, does anyone have any questions on Christie's presentation? And I'll get to the chief right after that. Just on what Christie presented. This is Mr. LaBranch. Christie, the um, slide that revenue and expense history. Um, so the revenue for 2018, you have 567216. Is that the parking lot revenue or is that the parking lot revenue plus the tickets? It's both. It's the parking lot revenue plus what we call parking enforcement, which is mostly tickets, tickets. yes. Okay, that answers the question. Thank you very much. How mm -hmm. much is that in tickets? Because the previous years it wouldn't be including tickets. No, but since parking enforcement. I understand why you couple them together, yeah. but it's not comparative as a consequence year to year. Yeah, because you, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Christy, you went, I went back, back and put went it back year to year, year and took oh, the you numbers. put the parking tickets in in the prior years as well? Okay, thank you for that. <coughs> to make it apples and apples. Thank you for that. And by the way, you keep re referencing the default budget, 2018 default budget. Yes. Isn't it actually the operating budget for 2018? It is the operating budget. So, yeah, it's not, yeah. not, it's an operating budget, not a default That's budget. Correct. It happens to have been born from a default budget. Right. But it's an operating budget, okay? Any other questions, Mr. Warburg? Okay, I have, this, this is a big area of concern. On the presentation, though. No, you said, uh, Christy, you go to the chief, no? Mm -hmm. no. Well, the chief has Questions a, on uh, Christy's presentation. No, I don't have Okay. To. Any questions on Christie's presentation? No. No. Chief, you're dying to say something, I'm sure. Let's say it. Not really. I can sit here and be okay. quiet. Okay. I mean, uh, let's go right into the parking enforcement unit, uh, which is the only section in this budget. Uh, questions on that, Mr. Walbert? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, help me out here, uh, Chief. So, parking enforcement director, is that Mr. DeMarco? Mr. DeMarco holds a position year to year as the supervisor of the parking lots. But we were going to consolidate enforcement and the lots into one entity. So we're creating a, a different position that's the director of parking because it's going to be more encompassing than just the parking lots. Excuse me, Brian, may I ask a question? Uh, Mr. LeBranch is treasurer of the village district. Who is in, who's the uh, kingpin on those parking lots? Mr. O'Neill? The kingpin. Yeah, the, the, who runs the parking Mr. lot? Mr. O'Neill, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can answer that, Brian, right. okay? Um, the kingpin is the chairman, Chuck Rage. Okay. He's the, he's the king. Now, we have employees. No, I'm, I'm just Sorry, I used the wrong uh, method. And we have employees as well. Yeah. Okay, but... but the Who's the supervisor of the parking lots is my question. Well, it's actually the parking lot director now. That's his new title as okay. of this past year. It's Michael, uh, Michael O'Neill. Okay, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. Sorry, Brian. Go ahead. So let's let's start here. So years ago, we had Tom McGowan. Yes. He ran all the parking lots, right? <coughs> okay. Well, well, he was here when you were here in '95. But anyway, so Vic DeMarco has been a. I, I love all these titles, by the way. That's another thing that drives it. It goes with the precinct, too. It's just getting crazy. So we now, and I, I need to be clear on this because I think I got my answer, but I don't know if I got it. The parking enforcement director is not Vic DeMarco? Vic works on a year-to-year -year contract. So, yeah. so right now, so, no, this is okay. a new position. So this summer he worked as supervisor of the parking lots, right? Correct. Are you telling me that this parking enforcement director is Mr. Gidley? I don't believe I said that. Oh, okay. So we have, we're proposing this position, right? Parking enforcement director? Yes. Okay. Lieutenant, Gid Lieutenant Gidley is a lieutenant within the police department. Right, I understand that. So maybe I should have had some opening comments to clarify some of this thing. So well, no, you know, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me clarify okay. what happened, what occurred. Oh, wait. Would you like to make an opening statement? Yeah, I would now. I, 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 I dropped proceed. the ball on that one. I should have done that because maybe I could have clarified things a little more and taken away. Yeah. So when the rec director uh, retired, the decision was made that um, the parking lots were going to be put under the direction of the police department. So I ta tasked Lieutenant Gidley with overseeing that operation and working with uh, Victor Marco 
to get the things up and running because Vic is a part-time seasonal employee, so he, he's not, he, he wasn't up here at the time that the change was made, okay? So we had to get going to get things done because there were a number of facility issues that we had to deal with and some issues that we wanted to do with security and safety mm -hmm. of our employees and the funds. So we began going down that path and I gave that to Lieutenant Gidley as part of his extra duties to do within the police department. This was not a, it's going to the police department and that's where it's staying forever. This was kind of, this was on the fly when Diana retired, we weren't quite sure what the town wasn't quite sure what they're gonna do. It just made sense, we're right there. Um, we can help oversee it with the officers and utilize them to move monies around as opposed to having a, a citizen carrying large sums of cash in their personal vehicles, unsafe. So it just the decision was made for those reasons, at least temporarily, to put that under the direction of the police department and me as the chief. As we progressed, it seems like that's where it's going to stay for at least this time. So I propose that we take all the parking issues we deal with and put them under one entity. I did that because I look at other communities and the way they do things. Now, you some places you have a police department and you have a separate parking enforcement group. In some communities, you have a police department with a parking enforcement division. And I looked at that model. Me, Chief. Yeah, go ahead. That, that proposal is not reflected in this budget because it's not been adopted yet, right? I believe it has. That's what this budget reflects. Your proposal is, has been adopted by the Board of Selectmen? I believe so. Okay, continue to explain yeah. it then because yeah. then it's rolled. So looking, I looked at the model that Concord has. And some in your eye? You, yeah. You know. Well, that's what happens with my eyes when I don't have the glasses on. Okay, all right. They have very tired eyes. If I'm looking at computers all my life. <sighs> Me too. <man. laughs> so anyhow, I looked at the Concord Police Department and had a conversation with some folks that are up there working and just how does it work. And it just kind of made sense to me that if we're going to continue to operate this entity, then I kind of like the model they had. They, they have a group of civilians mm -hmm. that does their meters and their pay to park lots, and they handle that all, but they're under the police department, similar to our animal control budget. The animal control officer is a separate budget, yeah. but responsive to the police chief. And that's kind of what I was looking at with this, is to try to how to model this. So that's how we got to this, and that's what this budget does reflect. So all of the parking issues throughout town, whether they're town-owned parking lots or town-owned highways slash roads, mm -hmm. uh, are all going to fall under this umbrella now. The vast majority of the enforcement, police officers will still write parking tickets where it's appropriate. But if I can free police officers up from that duty at key, very busy times like the weekends and have the civilians do it because they can and they're at a much lower pay rate, mm -hmm. that helps free up officers to do the police work as opposed to those type of things. Mm -hmm. And did I also hear uh, something about, um, what's that? You know, you buy the ticket at the parking lot and you put the kiosk. sticker on, on your uh, the kiosk. Situation. Pay and display. Pay and display. Pay and display. Pay and display, yeah. That's the magic phrase, yeah. That has it been actually decided that we're going to do pay and display? Uh, it has not been des decided. Um, I am a big proponent of that. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should maximize our revenues in our parking. Uh, you know, everybody else in the beach is maximizing their ability to, mm -hmm. to uh, make those revenues. And I just want, if, if this is going to rest with the police department, then I want to do the best job I can as the chief in overseeing that to maximize those revenues. So that may be an option. As I recall, you, you did express concern about, you know, you being in the revenue generating business as police chief, and I want you to know that I share that concern very deeply. When I offer that, when I say that, though, understand what I'm saying is I am worried when people say we should have quotas for police officers writing any kind of ticket because that's, I think people look at that as a source of revenue, and it is a source of revenue. But that should not be the primary driving force for a police officer to take an official action. <laughs> so when we look at the police department running the parking lots, I think that's a little bit different because people are asking for that service as opposed to you getting pulled over. And I don't think anybody wants to get pulled over and get a ticket from us. There's a difference. I would, I, I would argue there's a difference in that area. Well, you know, when you pull over someone for speeding, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the revenue that's generated from that doesn't go directly to the town, does it? 
Depends what the charge is. There are certain speeding. things that come. That speeding, no, that would go to the state. Right. Yep. Uh, and for that very reason, because in the old days it would go to the town, right? Correct. And then it became kind of a revenue source, and you had speed traps all over the place, and <laughs> la And we can we can trust the state much better than local government, I'm sure. Well, in a sense, we, <laughs> we segregated the act, the activity from the revenue generation. Correct. And that that was the key there. Yes, and, I would agree. And with and your I, I thought when I heard your statement about being concerned about being a revenue generating um, entity. Mm -hmm. That we might be reintroducing this only in the concept of parking tickets, for example. Well, that's uh, why I think we have so. our favorite place that people just love to park and not yeah. pay and display. Let's keep our eye on that and generate yeah. the maximum revenue, kind of thing. You know, I think the important thing is is the maximization of the revenue for a legitimate and for a legitimate action, a legitimate thing that somebody wants to do. They want to come to the beach. They want to place to park, and we 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 deal with that. Um, we've always done the enforcement, say, in the town lots um, that aren't pay, but where we have resident parking only. The police department has always enforced that, either through police officers or we've had civilian enforcement folks over the last couple of years. So in that light, I don't look at that as the primary function is revenue generating. That's just mm -hmm. what happens when we take the appropriate lawful action. The parking lots that are pay Somebody pulls in, they pay to park. It, it now the parking lot does not concern. Matters not to me who's man in the parking lot. To be parking lot doesn't me. concern. And me I want to be very clear. I did not ask for this assignment. I kind of probably I was a little vocal about why am I getting stuck with this. I hate <laughs> my, my, my question of concern, which I thought was really a reflection of, yeah. of what you had said, yeah. was uh, parking tickets as revenue, and the the possible. Uh, ethical challenge that may evolve quite naturally over time. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily after you're long gone, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not while you're uh, in, in office. Uh, and I see that as a, a real concern, and I just wanted to say I share that concern. Mm -hmm. uh, and this tag and display, or whatever you call it, I can't, can't remember that phrase. Pay and display. Pay and display. <laughs> this pay and display system, which is problematic in my opinion, especially for people who have physical problems walking all the way to the place to pay and then walking all the way back to the yep. display. Uh, there are problems physically, but also there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of problems. And you're going to implement it all town-wide, or you're only, only going to isolate certain neighborhoods, and now you're kind of like dividing the town up, all kinds of political issues, which should not be your That's concern. Not, no, I couldn't uh, do that anyhow. But I, I think the public ought to be aware yep. that if the selectmen take on this policy, then they're going to probably be seeking or wanting to avoid a tremendous amount of public feedback on their their uh, particular neighborhood or street. So, with that said, I'll just open it up to the question. Well, I, I think I started the questioning about 50 minutes ago, but thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm really hep on this because I, I'm I'm not. Um, I'm going to go back to what you said, and I don't knowing you, I don't think you asked for this responsibility. And the, the statement you just made was it was all of a sudden now it's under the police department. Something I'm summarizing. Yeah. I'm surprised you mentioned Concord because the majority of the communities, including the state, by the way, which, which made it a law that they had a separate entity that run state parks meters. They wanted a separate group of people. That's another discussion because obviously in this coming year's budget, it's under the police. How much, I, I'm going to come back to the Park Enforcement's director, but here's the other concern I have. We sit here and we talk about overwork, stress doing this and that. You've got a member of your senior management team that as part of his duties this summer <laughs> oversaw a parking lot. So, and I don't say this facetiously, did we not have enough to do for Lieutenant Gidley that we had to give him over? And, and that's a legitimate question because why would you inherit, why would you take another operation on? Well, I, I, Brian, I, I, I don't really believe that's even a question that has to be asked. We all know that we are tasked with a lot and we're doing a lot, but when I'm given an assignment, and I'm told we need to do this. I can not like it all I want, okay? I don't agree with every decision my bosses make. Neither do you. And sometimes you have to voice your opinion in a, an appropriate manner, mm. which I feel I did. But when the key to leadership, and that's what we preach down there, I always used to tell the subordinates, tell me the number one difference that Chief Sullivan and I have in the operation of this police department. And they would look, I don't think there are any. I go, you'd be wrong. 
because I've been asked to leave his office more than once because I was very boisterous about my disagreements on certain issues. But when my boss tells me, I've heard what you had to say, but this is what we're doing, I go out and I walk down the hallway like it's my idea. Because the reason you have to do that in my line of work is the minute you say, I don't want to do this, it's their idea, mm -hmm. you've now undermined yourself as a leader and you're giving people license not to do their job, and I just won't do that. And I, so when my bosses tell me, and they have the legal right to direct me, I am going to follow the direction, and I am going to do my best for this community to make it work, and I think we did that. I appreciate that. You're also a taxpayer in this town. And so here's the thing, the conversation that is going to be throughout me for the rest of life. You're going to hear a lot about why I bring up wages. Mm -hmm. We need a parking enforcement director. We need two assistant lot supervisors. We need a supervisor. <coughs> I'm telling you, it is, and I'm not, this is, I'm not directing this at you personally, but we've got to be able to stand up and say, all these years when, it, when the revenue has increased under Diana Martin, under Diana Lasson prior, mm -hmm. under Sue DeMarco, and, and Sue, mm -hmm. Sue uh, Clay before, that's how far I go back. Right. We've made the money. It was under the Recreation Department. The minute Renee was named director, the minute the day, it's the same problem I'm having, and I express this to Selectman Barnes too when watching the meetings. I see things come forth, and it, it absolutely equates to the discussion that we're going to have throughout this budget. And this is one of the areas, although it's not, it's not a collective bargaining, it's not a year-round position. But this stuff with wages, based on surveys, and we just automatically give whatever. Why do we need to create a parking lot? And, and maybe Fred can answer this, but I, I, you're not going to convince me that we need a parking lot administration as a separate entity under the a, a police department for 2019, when in fact, as far as I know, and looking at the revenues for the past several years, they were doing great. I do agree with the chairman when he brings up, although, and I have the same concerns Tim does on the, the handicap or, or people disabled getting to, to pay and display. But then I get nervous when you're talking a half a million dollars and we have tickets. It's like, whoa. I mean, nobody does tickets anymore. I mean, you know, it, however we're doing collecting. But this is another example where it was presented and I, and I put that in parentheses, and thank you for you, your honesty about, yes, this is the edict. I understand that. You know, you get mm -hmm. told you have to do that. But I, when I look at it, somebody says, calls me tomorrow, and they say, Brian, did you say they're proposing, like, what? How many? It just doesn't sit well. And it doesn't matter whether I love the town employees, which I do, and I love the department heads and the administration. we got a great town. But the taxpayers in this town are seeing it as a tol to in totality, and this is another example I never thought in 2018, and you and I were on the beach for many years, that we'd be talking about a parking enforcement director for three months. Is this position three months? Um, I believe that would be roughly the time. So we're going to pay a parking enforcement director 22000 for three months. We pay a supervisor fifteen thousand. Well, I know. Months. Okay, what I'm saying. Okay, but so the, but the responsibilities have now expanded. Somebody has to oversee it. Now you've made, made the point. You talked about I used a senior member of my staff to manage that. I, I don't think that sits well with you. It doesn't sit well with me. No, it doesn't. So if we're gonna, if the decision is by the people that make this decision that it's gonna go under the police department then yes, I think this is the right thing to do. We need somebody that's going to oversee the operation that has now consolidated. And I agree, your assessment was right on, Brian. It's not probably something that Lieutenant Gidley but, should be handling from now on. I need somebody else to oversee the parking lots and the enforcement operation. So I don't I, think that's unreasonable. We're talking about... No, but i got to tell you, I'm going to go back to the perception. For the longest department head we had in history until last year, in consecutive years, Diana Martin, mm -hmm. she oversaw an operation that brought in anywhere from three hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand a year, yeah, more. or more, oh boy, yeah. and did it. And, and I can tell you, Diana, like you, I mean, they're out in the community, worked everywhere. There was never a point where we say, "Why are we separating this out?" And it seems to me. I can't be convinced, and I'm not convinced from a cost-benefit analysis, and that's what the Budget Committee deals with, how I, can, I can't promote this. I, I can't understand. Oh, oh. Well, it's because, it, in, in, in all fairness, 
This is why these budgets, one of the, the, the minuscule reasons, among a lot of reasons, why these budgets don't pass. Because people see this and it eats at them. And they say, you know, the joke is let's create another position. We've seen it, and that's not your issue. That's Mr. Welch's issue, which I'm going to get a lot of a talk when we get to the legal department and town manager's office. This is the, listen, I live in the real, I'm in the community, and I can tell you that based on what I'm saying tonight and based what we're going to be talking about, this doesn't sit well. This should have been, and listen, I'm just putting it out there that if you, somebody told me a legitimate, valid reason why we had to take the parking administration of our lots out of the recreation department and put it under the police, when you've got enough stuff and all the great work you guys are doing, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I can't see this in the form it is now. We just seem to be creating, and you just, was it Mr. Ladd said, Mr. O'Neill's a parking lot director now too? I mean, I think we got all kinds of directors. I, I just think the perception is wrong. That's all I'm gonna say on this. I, I'm absolutely against this. And at some time, as we get the final review, I'm gonna have a motion on the table I don't think there was enough cost-benefit analysis done on this. I think it was a, like three other decisions in Regina's defense that came before the board that was a done deal, and it was put, and that's all I'm going to say. So uh, that's great. Thank you, Mr. Walburton. Mr. LeBranch. I'm going to try to keep this <clears throat> brief. <laughs> um, Christy, do you have a <gasps> revenue figure for the parking lots, an actual number for the parking lots for this year? Final figure. I looked in the book and I couldn't find it under. I only have through September, which is Which would be as accurate as I need, pretty much. And you're not going to. The little bit that you might have gotten from a couple of concepts isn't going to make much difference. But yeah, because there was a little bit of revenue in October. Right. Uh, let's see. At the end of September, the parking lots for the daily revenue had taken in 500 and. Uh, Actually, $498,209. $209. Is that up or down from last year? That is uh, slightly over the amounts for last year. I think I grabbed all this when I brought this down. I thought I had grabbed September. Yeah. Yeah. It's slightly over. Slightly over. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the um, chief, the person that you're going to. The parking was enforcement the, director is yeah, seasonal, it was a and that, was the that you're going to go out and hire somebody. It, it could end up being Victor Marco. It's a position. We'll do draft the job description in a format, post it, see who's interested. Right, and that person will take care of the parking yeah. lot. Um, Dan Gidley will no longer be. The lieutenant in the police department will no longer be charged with that. The director of parking would be answering to me. Uh, similar, similar to what the uh, animal control officer, or if I designate it for my absence, if I'm not there, more than likely to designate. And then he will as well um, do the hiring for the seasonal parking lot attendees. He will. He well, the town has a hiring process. Um, okay, we we post it. He'll oversee it. He'll oversee that. Because he's going to be the boss, basically. But there's a lot of stuff that goes on with hiring employees in this town, including even the seasonal people mm -hmm. that they have to accomplish. Um, so that's more of a town office function than it is uh, a well, part-time department. I, I guess I, instead of hiring, I should have said he'll be um, he'll be there. Overseeing, boss. yes. Okay. And the... Um, Now, he would also be putting the money, collecting the money at the end of a, a shift, for instance, putting in a bag and, and bringing it over and putting it into the uh, mm -hmm. deposit safe into the place. We're not going to discuss that okay, here okay, because that's, that's, that deals with safety issues, okay, if you don't mind. All right. no, um, no, there's a very safe fine. process put in. That's fine. Please, let's not talk about it then because that's something. If you want an offline discussion, yeah, yeah, I don't mind sharing, but not yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, I understand. The, the last thing I want to mention is um, you mentioned at the, uh, the budget, at the, the uh, selectmen's meeting about automation, which <coughs> automation, credit card reader, wouldn't that be great? Um, is there, you, you mentioned that you're looking into it. Is that, how far along are you into that? Not deep. I, I, I gotta be honest, I, I go back and forth on the credit card issue. Credit card would great, create availability, but here, for people to use a different way to pay. But on the other hand, we don't really have much problem filling the lots when, when it's busy and people have the cash. And if you use credit cards, then you're paying a fee. Yeah. 
So there's pluses and minuses. I think the auditors would love it if we use credit I broke cards. That down. Auditors would money. love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but are we dipping into our revenue because now we have to pay a percentage to a company? I think that needs to be. If we were ever going to go down that path, we need to explore all of those. There are simpler systems. There are the simple systems, and, and Tim, you made a good point about dealing with people that have challenges, having to walk up and down. That in the lots, I can, you know, I always look at, I look out every day at that lot out in front of the PD. How would I make this? If I was going to automate it, how would I do it? And I thought about that too. It's I, I see sometimes with the folks dealing with the state, the kiosks are great, but there is an issue with that. Mm -hmm. If you travel around a lot of the the automated lots you're seeing down in Boston and down that way, it's you pull in, you hit the button, you get the ticket, the gate goes up, and you pay as you come out. Right. So nobody would have to deal with it. So there's a when you Look at parking stuff. You would not believe the number of things you can find online as to how to manage a parking lot. I have an officer that works for me that actually managed uh, the parking lots for a major uh, hospital in Boston, and I, I talked to him a lot about what do you do with this, what do you do with that. So it, it, it's a, it's nothing is set in stone as to where we're going right now. This is what we're proposing. Those other issues we're talking about, there's nobody says we're doing it. It, there's an ex exploration I think that's worthwhile to look at. Would it be beneficial to the town and its revenues? And is it going to cause more headache than help? I think we have to look at those things. I, I will say that um, as far as uh, pay and display, having the uh, ticket and then the thing goes up and then you pay on the way out, mm -hmm. the one of the reasons that that parking lot are your parking lots, there's several of them, mm -hmm. uh, or the village district's parking lot, uh, the ability to be able to continually change the rate. During the, you could change the rate three times during the same day. It's yeah. cloudy in the morning, the sun comes out, it and then it starts raining later on. The price is gonna go up and down, and, and if it's obviously, you're going to maximize the amount of money that you yeah. can. And that's why, that's why, the, that's why it's, you have Four hundred, almost five hundred thousand dollars in revenue from just the parking lots is because over the years the, the method that they've been using, which is to maximize the amount of money that you can get. Uh, the only, you know, the only thing is that that automation. When you mentioned that credit card reader, um, and you know how the auditors would love it, and I thought, oh boy, that would be great. I'd, I'd like more information on that myself, mm -hmm. because any time that you're working with. Four hundred ninety-eight thousand two hundred nine dollars <laughs> cash. <laughs> that has its own problems, but but we needn't talk about that any further. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. you, Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Thank Ladd. What percentage of the revenue is from the parking tickets? You gave the gross numbers, the five hundred plus. The majority of the revenue is from the daily lot revenue mm -hmm. and the numbers that I use. Parking lot, uh, from parking tickets ranged from 39000 all the way up to a high of 66000 when I compared 2014 through 2018. So roughly 10%, something like that. Okay. And the other part, under the, on page 44, you said the estimated revenues were 423, 825? That's because that's what we have when we put this book together. Hasn't oh. been changed. Early. Yeah. Okay. And it hasn't changed much? Yeah. It's up to yeah. 498. Oh. What okay. number did I? 498,209. Okay. Right. And I think it's just over. I think in the end, I think I want to say it was like 523,000 when I looked at it. Um, it was 100. Just looking at like what had come in in October also, I think we're up to about 523. Okay. But Thank you. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Lapham? No? Uh, anyone else? No. Nope. Okay, we're all set on uh, parking administration or parking enforcement unit, depending on the flavor of the moment.